Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another week of Church Online, and we want to welcome you into our home once again. We're doing church at home, right here at the Garner House, into your house or wherever you are. We believe that God is moving out of the church house into your house, and we're learning how to bring His presence in our home. Today, we are in a series called Not Today, Satan. This is week number three of this series, and we're going through the book of Ephesians, and you need to understand that your spiritual enemy, Satan, is not some guy that's walking around with a pitchfork and wearing a red suit. He is very real. And this war is very real. The, the Bible describes him as the father of lies. He is the prince of darkness. And right now, he is attacking more than ever. He's attacking our homes. He's attacking our minds. He's attacking our emotions. He's attacking our relationships. We are isolated. And you and I, as followers of Jesus Christ, we need to know how to stand and tell him, not today, not today. And that's what we're going to stand and say today. Not today, Satan. You're watching this for a purpose because you're going through something that God needs to speak into you and encourage your spirit in a spiritual battle that you're fighting. So we're going to say, not today, Satan. Not today. If you got your Bibles, I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Maybe you got your paper Bible or maybe you got it on your phone. We do have message notes available on the app. If you click on the app, there'll be message notes available available there. And while you're turning there, I just want to do a real quick shout out to our campuses and tell you how much we love you and we miss you. I want to shout out to Columbia campus over in Columbia. You guys have been doing a lot of cleanup work and a lot of disaster relief. And I want to say thank you for that. We love you. We can't wait to see you. I want to say hey to our Summerall peeps over in Summerall at our Summerall campus. We love you. We are missing you and we can't wait to worship together again with you. And then to our Collins campus, man, we love you. We can't wait to see you. And we are so proud of all that you've been doing in this disaster relief. Well, this quarantine's been tough, huh? It's been, it's been something else. I have a definition for quarantine. It is a weight gaining program where you don't get haircuts and you watch TV and eat snacks. That's kind of my definition of quarantine. That's kind of what we've been doing. We've been working some. The church office is open, and you, you're welcome to contact us. But, um, but man, we've just been doing a lot of eating, a lot of watching TV. I, you know, I'm, I'm not a real big, big binge watcher as far as like little series. But one thing that owned me the other day was these 80, 80s, 1980s television shows. And I'm kind of a fan of these because this was kind of my growing up days, you know, like shows like Karate Kid, Back to the Future, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Beetlejuice, some of those 1980s movies, you know. And then one of the movies on there was Weekend at Bernie's. And Weekend at Bernie's was a show about two guys, two real losers, really, who was invited to go out into this resort with their boss. And when they got there, their boss had been killed by the mafia. And then he had already hired a hitman to kill them. So they spend this whole weekend dressing dragging this dead guy around, trying not to get killed. And they take him to the beach. They take him to the pool. And he's like the hit of the party when they take him to the party. And he's like up dancing around, but he's dead. They got like sunglasses on him, but nobody knows he's dead because he looks alive, you know, and, and they take him on this boat and he falls off the boat, you know, and they're, he's like skiing behind the boat and that's funny. And so, and, and this whole movie is about people, everybody thinking this guy's alive but he's really dead. And I was thinking, you know, that's kind of tragic when it's spiritually. It's funny when it's on a movie, but man, it's kind of tragic when you see a lot of people and they look alive, but they're really not alive. Maybe physically they're alive, but spiritually they're dead. And our passage in scripture today in Ephesians chapter two talks about how we are moving from death into life how to be alive and live, living alive. That may sound strange, but I want to read it to you right here out of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And it says, And you, Christ, have made alive who were dead 
who were dead in the trespasses. What were we dead in? In the trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Verse 3, hang with me. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. Of wrath. That's a powerful word. Just as the others. Push pause in your Bible right there. I want to say a few things about this passage of Scripture. Verse number 1. And I want to give you this point. If you're taking notes, go ahead and write this down. Satan, our spiritual enemy, knows we were born dead. We were born dead. You and I both were born spiritually dead. Look at what it says in verse 1. And you have made alive who were dead in the trespasses of sin. You were dead in the trespasses. You know, that that trumps us being bad. Well, I'm just not a real good... He doesn't say you're bad. He doesn't say you're evil. What does it say? It says you're dead. Dead people can't do better, y'all. Dead, Peter, dead people can't start reading their Bible and get their life in right, right. Dead people can't pray enough. Dead people can't do all the right things. They're dead. They need somebody to make them alive. I heard this funny thing uh, this guy said uh, or when they were asking him. They said, when someone is looking at you in the coffin, coffin, what do you want them to say about you? And he says, when somebody looks at me, his response was, when somebody looks at me in the coffin, I want them to say, look He's moving. (laughs) That's funny. I don't care what you say. That's what I want them to say about me. Dead people can't do anything. You can tell a dead guy, come on, do better. Do better. And so many times that's what we do at church, isn't it? We're telling dead people, come on, try harder. Doesn't make any difference. You need someone with a power to speak into you that can make you alive. Who can breathe into you because you were, we're spiritually born dead. We're sinners by nature and by choice. We're sinners through the genealogy of Adam. Through Adam's seed, we were born sinners. And we're sinners by choice because we choose that. That's because we're born dead. We have some goats back here behind our house. And it's one of those things we just kind of enjoy. And we had some baby goats the other day. But one of those baby goats was born not alive. It was born lifeless. And I thought to myself, it's such a sad thing to be born without any life in you. you, you, We couldn't do anything to help it. We couldn't do anything to make it better. It was born without life. And you and I in this world were born without life. And the only hope that we have is Christ. The only hope we have, y'all, is the Lord. And listen, and I'll go, we want to read some more of this scripture. But Satan wants you to stay dead. He does not want you to have any hope. He doesn't want you to have any life in you. And I'm talking to somebody right now that you feel dead. And Satan is speaking into you and he is saying, you're okay. It's fine. This is just the way life is. your, Your goal, you need to be happy. That's what he'll tell you. He'll deceive you and say, you just need more things in your life to make you happy. Those things will never make you happy. Maybe you just need to attend more religious services or maybe you need to watch more church online, which is fine. That's great. Watch this video 17 times, but it will not bring you to life. Only Christ can bring you to life. He is the only one. Because we are born spiritually dead. Now let's, let's move on because we need to be uh, find some hope in this. Verse number four. Two of the greatest words in all of this passage of Scripture. Right here. Look at what it says. But God. But God. Say that in your church at home. But God. Beautiful. Who is rich. Not poor in mercy. Because of His great love with which... He loved us. Notice the verbs in this. I've been doing a lot of teaching at homeschool, and I've been doing a lot of language, and I've been noticing verbs in the Bible. Look at what it says. He loved us. That's a verb. What's the object of that verb? Us. Even when we were dead in the trespasses of sin, He made us. Us, another verb, made us alive together in Christ. By grace, 
you have been saved. Look what it says in verse number six. And he raised us, another verb. We're also the direct object of race. Up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. What a powerful, powerful passage of scripture. It says that we were born into sin. We were born dead, but God. And you need to know this, that Satan had us but God. Satan had us, but God raised us, made us, loved us. It's a pretty good, simple message right there. But God loved us, made us, and raised us. You need to understand wherever you're at right now, there's a but God moment for you. There is hope for you. We're in, we're in a day where who knows how this is going to turn out. I don't know if there's going to be a normal. I don't know if we're ever going to go back to normal. In fact, I don't really want to go back to normal. I don't think there's anything back there for us. It's only forward. God is a God that moves people forward, not backwards. And I believe there's a new normal and a new thing that's happening inside uh, of us. And that but God, we're in a but God moment Everybody's worried about the virus, and and I think we should be. I think not worried, but we should be aware of the virus. But listen, we had a virus up in this house a couple years ago. It might not kill you, but it'll make you want to die. How many? The stomach virus. You ever heard of the stomach virus? I noticed my my daughter one evening, she didn't feel well. She said her stomach wasn't doing well, and and I, I, I saw her, and I was like, you okay? And we got her. And then all of a sudden, it was just like full on schluga. I mean, there it was. You know what I'm saying? And it just kept on and kept on. And, and I'm, I'm like, your mama needs to come take care of you. I'm telling you, this is a uh, daddy don't, I don't want to get this virus. And then you know how it does. About a day, it goes to the next one. And I'm like walking way away from him. Like, you stay over there. You don't need to be in, you stay over there. And, 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 and I done good. Friday was good. Saturday was good. Sunday, I preached at the church. Come home that evening, sitting there. My belly started kind of talking to me, sounded like dolphins, you know, like. It is making all kind of little sounds and noises. It was having fun. It was like on a joy ride, like roller coaster up in me. And I said, oh, no, I got it. And full on, there it was. You know, if you've never been in this position where you're holding something and sitting on something, you know what I'm talking about. And then there ain't nothing else to come out. And you're just like, and then you're trying to get, y'all been there. You, you may not die, but you want to die. And in that moment, I'm sitting there, I'm standing there, I'm holding there, I'm doing that. I'm like, oh, God, I help. But I knew this that I'd already seen two go through it and it would end. It would end. You ain't going to be there forever. I'm not going to be here forever. There's an end to this. And you need to understand something watching this video right now that this thing that we're in has an end. I don't know when it is, but there's an end to it. There's a but God moment in this. You were lost, listen, but God found you. You were wounded, but God healed you. You were afraid, but God gave you courage. You were anxious, but God gave you peace. I'm telling you, we must know that we serve a God that can put a but in anything. It's hopeless, yeah, but God. That marriage is gone, but God. You're an addict, but God. Just ask the woman who was caught in the middle of adultery. These religious people drug her half naked down the street, took her to the Bible study where Jesus was teaching and said this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. And he sat down and he wrote some things in the sand and looked up at them and said, if the one without the sin, you cast the first stone. And in that moment, they walked away. He looked at her and he said, where are those who are accusing you of your sin? And she says, they're gone, Jesus. And he said, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more, but God. Whatever whatever you're in right now, man, whatever your spiritual enemy has tricked you into being in, there's a but God, there's a prodigal son who told his father and says, I don't want nothing to do with you. You get away from me. 
Give me what's mine. I'm smarter than you. I'm better than you. I'm going to go live the way I want to live. He lived the way he wanted to live, ended up in a pig pen, was going back to his father. Little did he know his father had been praying that he would come home. He ran and he met him, hugged him, embraced him, put a coat on him, put shoes on his feet, give him a ring and killed the cow for him and had a pate, a party for the Lord. That's a but God moment. Thief hanging on the cross, suspended in midair next to the Savior of the world. One cursed him and said, if you really are God, get off of this thing and save us with you. The other one, who was a known criminal, who deserved what he was getting, looked over at Christ and said, when you get to where you're going, if you would remember me. And Christ says, today, you will be with me in paradise. But God, listen to me. God, had, you're not watching this by chance. You're watching this because the situation you're in needs a but God. You're dead, but God. And it gets even better. Let's continue reading in verse 8, 9, and 10. And these are the preeminent verses in all of this book. I love the Word of God, don't you? So sure and steadfast. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So much I could say about that, but this is what I want to tell you. That Satan had us but God. Satan lost us by grace. Listen to this message. It's so simple. It's the simplest gospel you'll ever hear. Born dead, but God, by grace. That's the gospel. Born dead, but God, by grace. Not by works, unless any man or woman should boast and try to take credit for it. It is by grace, and it's a gift of God. It's a gift of God. I want to speak from my heart for just a moment, if you'll allow me to, and just talk with you about grace. Because I believe somebody may need to hear, and maybe you don't understand what grace is. I've spent my life thinking that grace was something that you earned, because that's kind of how you're, you're taught many times. But grace is not something that's earned. Grace is something that is given. It's been paid for by Christ. I'll explain it this way. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach where I am. you got to preach where you are. If you're a pastor listening to this, let's don't preach to people where we think we are and where they need to be. Let's just be where we are. Because we're sinners like everybody else. If you think that, that I have earned the right to stand in front of this camera and be on this screen and that I'm good enough to do this, you are deceived, my friend. There's no way I'm, I'm able to do this. But the other day, it's by grace. And I'm out walking around the place, just having some time with the Lord. And there's some things I've done in my life that Satan uses and accuses me of constantly. And I know that I, I know the Lord loves me and I know He's forgiven me, but, but the Satan accuses me because I don't know about you, but I've hurt people before. I don't know about you, but I've lied to people before. I've done things that I've covered up. I've said things that I shouldn't have said. I've done some things that, that are not good. They're, they're wicked and they're evil things. And many times I know that grace covers them, but this is what Satan will do. He'll say, you, you know that thing you did? That thing you did, you're going to pay for that. You're going to pay for that. And this is going to happen. And this is going to happen. You need to get ready. And then he'll say, Satan will say, and it's probably going to happen soon because you, it's been a while and you, you're, you're about to pay for that. And then he'll say, and you know what? You need to get anxious about that and be afraid and be fearful and, get, and, and worry about it. And then he says, and then you probably need to have another plan. And, and he says this to me. And I don't know if he ever does this to you. He said, he'll say, he'll say, don't, you won't never be, you'll never be what God wanted you to be because of that. And the other day I was walking around, he was telling me all those lies. 
like he tells you as well. And he, but he said something messed up. He said, so good. He said, you're going to have to pay for your sins. And when he said that, something clicked in my mind. <laughs> clicked in my mind and, it's, and, and Jesus said that you can't pay for something that's already been paid for. You can't pay for something that isn't, doesn't cost anything. The only thing you can do is receive it. And today, salvation, grace is a gift. It's not a check that you earn. It's not a prize that you win. It is a gift that is given by God. And the only way to accept grace is to be given. And the grace of God Almighty is greater than anything. Jesus Christ died on a cross for our sins. Jesus Christ bled and He hung there. And they put Him in a tomb. And He rose again on the third day. And in the midst of that victory, in the midst of all of that pain, He said, it is finished. There is enough grace for every." Everybody, it, I'm rich in grace. And if you're watching this today, Jesus Christ said there is grace for you. The gospel of Jesus Christ is born dead, but God by grace. Born dead, but God by grace. By grace. Listen to me as we close. My heart for you to know the grace of God is, is yearning in this moment. For you to know God. Listen, I don't want you to be better. I don't want you to be good. I want you to be godly. I want you to love the Lord. You don't have to tell anybody not to do something when they adore the one they're doing it for. Listen, right now, if you're in a battle and you need to say not today, Satan. You feel like you're walking around dead. I want to offer the Spirit of God into your home right where you are. I ask you right now to bow your head with me as we have this moment with the Lord. Right where you are, bow your head. Maybe you need to stop and pull off the side of the road. This is a real moment for somebody. This isn't a time to click pause. This isn't a time to click another address link. This is a time for you and God to do business right where you are. Are you walking around physically alive but spiritually dead? Are you just going through the motions? Are you just existing and not living? My friends, the Lord God Almighty is calling you to live in a life that is abundant. It's a spirit-filled life. And right now, as we bow our heads together, maybe you need to turn your life and surrender your life over to Him. Say this with me. If you've given your life to Jesus Christ, say this with me. Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner and I was born dead. But Jesus Christ died for that sin and rose from the grave. And right now, by faith, I put all of my trust in the grace of God. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And today, if you pray that prayer, I believe based on the Word of God, you are born again. The devil has lost hold on you. His lies have no power on you. He cannot accuse you anymore because you don't belong to the world anymore. You belong to Jesus Christ. You are His. And I rejoice with you in that. If you've made that decision today and you need help or you'd like prayer, we want to ask you to contact us. There will be an email there on your screen to uh, follow up with us. You can direct message us on Facebook. However you're watching this, we want to connect with you and help you to walk in this if you need help. I want to thank you so much for joining us today, and I pray this message was a blessing to you.